Hello, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the functionality of the quiz tutor. Um, after that, you may decide to use it uh, for your courses or even uh, decide to contribute with uh, the implementation of some module. So, any course in uh, Technico can use it because it's integrated with uh, login with Phoenix and information about the courses teachers and students in Phoenix. So basically what you only need to do is to log in into Phoenix and by logging into Phoenix we'll get um, the set of courses you are uh, uh, responsible for or uh, teaching. For instance in this case I have uh, three courses, one in the first semester and the other two of the uh, second semester. The one in blue is because I've already been using it, okay, so, but uh, in gray, so you may decide to open it. For instance, suppose that I decide to use it the next semester for engineering software. I just click there, and if I activate it, immediately all the students can basically start using the system. I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what we have done in architecture software. Okay, so we have your interface and you have in the management tab, you can see basically the main functionality that we provide. So we have questions, topics, quizzes, assessments, students, and we have a module that allows you to import and export from XML, which is actually not finished, but we are working on. So let's start a little bit with questions, but what I'm gonna do now it's just, just to log out because uh, I'm going to change the information and I'm going to show you that actually you can assess this, this system either as a student or as a teacher and that way you can uh, experiment yourself and evaluate and decide whether you want to use it. So let's uh, log in in the demo course as a teacher. Actually, you load here all the information from the software engineering course, and we'll start with questions. So in questions, basically what you do is that you can create and manage the questions that you're going to put in the quizzes. So as you see, uh, associated with which question, you have the, the topics. So you can associate topics uh, of the questions. For instance, I can just come here and say, well, it's also a location view type and then that will be part of the topic of the question. Actually, I can see the question by clicking there and I see, well, the question in bold is the, the correct option. So you can edit them, okay? And there you have these fields that you fill uh, with the question and the options and you can, say which one is the correct one and you can use markdown here so it's not difficult to see how to use markdown actually there's a link to a page where is the markdown guide that allows you to do that so other thing that you, you can do here is basically you can also Create a new question by extending or changing an existing question is this duplicate question option. So basically you just generate this form, the form is filled with the, 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 the source question, let's call it like that, and then you can just change it and create a new question. Okay, and of course you can delete questions as well. Something that you need to know about the questions is that uh, actually you can just search for something. And I'm actually searching for questions that have a figure so that you we can see. So you have this image there. So this is the markdown for the figure. And that's, so let's click there so that you can see. So it's a question that contains a figure. And what actually you need to do is that you write the question, you put the markdown where the figure will appear, but then you use this link to upload the figure, okay? So other information that you have about questions is related with uh, the difficulty of the question. So basically, the, it's the number of correct 
answers and wrong answers. So you have this information about uh, when the students answer. And you can change the status of a question being available, disabled. You can play with these during the semester such that uh, we decide which questions are available at any moment. Okay? So, besides questions, you have topics. You can define topics. That's pretty simple to define the topics. Usually, it's just a string. You can search for the topics. So, adventure, okay. And of course, you have the number of questions that are assigned to this topic, okay? And you can delete or edit the topics. Then you have the part where you build your quizzes. So that's what some of the quizzes that we prepared, but you can build a new quiz. Basically, to build a new quiz, just say that. Then you have all the questions here about the quiz, so you give a title to the quiz. So let's call it quiz. Quiz one, the available date, so when it's going to be available, to the, so that the students can answer it. Let's say that's going to be on the 3rd of February, uh, 2 o'clock, okay. And then you also have the conclusion date, so let's say that it's going to be on the 7th, okay. So you can ask, uh, also ask uh, if the questions will be scrambled or not uh, for each one of the students that's going to answer. And then you're going to start choosing which question should appear in the quiz. So you can search and by searching you select them. But uh, this is quite easy. So basically by adding, you are adding a question to the quiz. So the question is, is number one here. You can add another question and so you keep adding questions as you want. And of course, you can change the question position. So this is the first one. If you want to appear them to appear at the end, you just move it to the end. So and when you save the quiz, so you have a new quiz, and that's quiz one, and you can see the quiz here. Okay, that's the quiz that the students are going to answer. So it's pretty easy as well to create quizzes. Now let's go for another functionality. Oh, before I, I will just show you the students. So these are the students. Of course, we have, just, we have just changed these the names so that you don't see the, the names of the actual names of the students of last semester. But you can see basically which questions the user, how many questions the user, the user answered and the number of correct answers. And Okay, and so the difference here about correct answers and t correct teacher answers is that it depends on whether the student just uh, answers a question that is uh, submitted by the teacher or if it is questions that are in quizzes that basically are generated for self-assessment by the students. So you can have this information and have an idea whether the students are answering, for instance, just to have an idea. In our course, we have students that answered around 2,000 questions, probably, but, or more than 10,000 questions, some of the students. Finally, in the, the teacher interface, probably the functionality is a bit more complex, I'd say, is this idea of assessment. And the idea of assessment is that I can group questions according to topics to be answered uh, for a certain period. So what I'm going to do here is basically I define what is an uh, assessment and let's edit this one to see what I have there. So an assessment basically I have topics, groups of topics and what I'm saying here is that this is a, a disjunction and so what I'm saying here is that all the questions that are have the topic architecture design and the question or the questions that have the topic performance scenario and so on. So these are the questions basically that uh, will appear and the students can select to answer these, just these type of questions. Okay, so I can see basically which questions are about architecture design in the database. Okay, and I can also see actually all the selected questions for what this assessment that I called test for. 
Okay, so these are all the questions that are related with test four. Okay, so something that you can see here is that associated with these assessments, I have the status whether they are available or not. I'm going to show, for instance, the third mini test. I'm going to just disable it, and we'll see what happens when the student interacts with the system. Now I will just log out. And I will use the student interface for the demo so that you can see what happens here. So the student see the, the quizzes and see as two type of quizzes you can answer. Available quizzes that are quizzes submitted by the, the teacher. For instance, there is an, uh, one quiz that is about a location view type. And basically what they can do, they just can answer the quiz, okay? And by answering the quiz, they just pick the options they want so they can change their mind about some, someone and then you just end the quiz. As soon as they end the quiz, basically you just receive the one that are correct and that, that it failed. Okay? So and at the same time you can look at the statistics and see how, we, how well it's performing in terms of number of quizzes and correct answers. But besides this type of quizzes, available quizzes, the student can create quizzes himself. And basically, that's where the assessment concept appears. Is that so? These are the available assessment concepts. So when I say that I'm going to create a quiz for the second mini test, basically are the, the ones that have the topics related with what is going to be the second mini test. And I can decide that I want to generate a quiz with 10 questions. So basically, when I select here the system, this, then I create the quiz, and the system generates a quiz with ten can answers that the, the the student can answer, ten questions that the student can answer, and I finish. And I think that is pre pretty much the current uh, uh, functionality of the system. Okay, thank you.